The first time the Columbia dropped earthward to this dry lake bed, protective heat tiles simmering, she touched down to a picture-perfect landing. Now, astronauts Joe Engel and Richard Truly hope to duplicate that performance. Here on the ground, NASA officials say they beefed up the number of support team members assigned to the landing. Last time, they scheduled two long shifts each day and wound up with some very weary workers. Now they've added over 100 extra people and a third shift. If conditions are right, meaning if enough wind is blowing, they would like to conduct a test of how the Columbia behaves in a crosswind. That test is a prime concern of project manager Mel Burke. The reason we want to get a crosswind landing, of course, is to qualify the vehicle for landings down at the Cape. But the crosswind landing and, and would uh, put us on runway 15 out here, and the minimum crosswind that we, we require would be 10 knots. This is a fuel cell that looks a lot like the one that caused all the trouble. It has hydrogen in one end, oxygen in the other. What this does to both the astronauts and the mission is that it means we will still try to accomplish a large number of the tests on the manipulator arm tomorrow and also carry out a certain amount of the observing for the various experiments on board. There's a pre-mission plan of a, what we call a minimum mission plan, which has a 54-hour reserve and which allows us to accomplish what we might call the major objectives of the mission. This is a television picture sent back this afternoon from the Columbia. The camera was being operated by Houston, as astronaut Joe Engel reported to mission control. Both Dick and I are feeling real well. We're certainly feeling the effects of zero-g, the fullness in the head and all that, but uh, we're feeling real good. Good, glad to hear it. This is the cargo hold. You're looking to the rear of Columbia. You can see the big 50-foot long maneuvering arm off to the side and the science package amidships. Farther back are the rounded pods that house rocket engines. No tiles appeared to be missing this time as they were on the first flight of the Columbia. Apparently, the problem of damage during launch has been resolved. And so have most other problems. The astronauts spent a busy day troubleshooting. They were in constant contact with mission control, throwing switches and reading dials, trying to fix that bulky fuel cell. The Columbia is flying upside down so that its cameras can see the Earth below while looking at the payload bay. And in this picture, you can see the Pacific as the astronauts were passing over Hawaii. Range of 653 miles and uh, velocity of about Mach 15. Good television picture. 25,000 feet. About 3,000 feet low now, out of 24,000 feet. Roger that. 9,230. Check speed brake auto. Okay, speed brake, body flap, auto, everything's auto. Thank you. George Abbey, Director of Flight Operations at the Johnson Space Center.
cab.